not 316, BTW, Amer Cooper, The J Man or Riot, Snap God, Brian J. Perez, Hulk Hogan, We Coming For You, The Wrestling Hound, Ramen Hawaii Kit, Badoo, hopefully I said that right, and of course, The Bloodline, you have been acknowledged. Metal Driver here, and I'm back again with another Elite Ruthless Aggression review, and today I am looking at Series 5, I think? I don't really know at this point. The boxes don't say what series they come from, and Owen Stop Motion left a comment saying that there are two Series 3. I don't know if this is what he was referring to, but Wrestling Collector Shop has this listed as Series 5, so I'm going to call it that, and it's none other than JBL. On the side we get an image of JBL, then on the back we get another image along with some information and the rest of the figures that are in this wave. Alright, so I'm pretty excited for this because JBL is one of my favorite heels from the Ruthless Aggression era, and unfortunately I do not have a JBL in my collection. I have Acolytes and APA branch up, but no JBL, so without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and take a closer look at JBL. Here we have John Bradshaw Layfield decked out in his 2005 Great American Bash attire, which looks really nice. Got some great detail on the figure, and he comes with some accessories that include a fisted and a gripping hand. The matching opposite hand is already on the figure, and he comes with his signature cowboy hat, but it's decked out in red, white, and blue instead of the usual all-white. Again, this is because this is his attire that he wore at the Great American Bash when he faced off against Batista for the World heavyweight title and the final accessory that he comes with is this jacket that has coattails on the back decked out in this red white and blue American colors the paint detail on the jacket looks really nice I do like the texture here as well it's not just a smooth piece you can kind of see that sculpting here on the lapels sculpting on the stars as well it's not just a painted star and it doesn't have paint paint looks good looking at the jacket some nice red right there good paint crisp and clean line work just the way I like it. Same thing on the back. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Good clean looking red going all the way down. Maybe just some missing paint right here. Not a big deal. He's got some sculpted shoulder pieces, shoulder fringes. Is that what they are? I don't know. It looks nice. I like this jacket. Looks really good. And let's go ahead and put that hat on. Oh yeah, I love how that looks. Looks like he's up to no good. Just the way JBL should be. The dastardly bully he is. But what's not dastardly is this head sculpt. It looks really nice. It's got a good likeness to JBL. The paint on the eyes and the lips and the teeth all look good. The hair is sculpted really well. I like the paint on the hair. It's not too blonde. It's not too dark. I think it's a nice shade of color. Definitely enjoying the likeness to JBL here. Love the smile on his face. Perfect for that pompous expression that he would always have. So really happy with how this turned out. Unfortunately, I'm not as happy with the torso. I don't think this is a good fit for JBL. Bradshaw was more of a bulky guy. He wasn't ripped, but he was definitely big. I don't really think this torso is a good representation of his physique that he had during this time. This torso seems a little bit small and too defined for JBL, so that's a shame. He does have some beefy arms, so that's good. Perfect for the clothesline from hell. He's got wristbands with red, white, and blue on both sides. Looks good. Nice elbow pad right there. And then look at the trunks. Nice paintwork on the star and the stripes here. The yellow outline looks good as well. The rest of the trunks are black, but on the back we do get a JBL logo, painted well, good line work, nice and clean, good looking legs as well, some fat knee pads, which I'm not a fan of because these knee pads hinder articulation, so actually that's not too bad. Normally these hinder the articulation a lot more than this, so huh. I'm pleasantly surprised with that. And some standard black boots. Going over the articulation, the head is on a ball joint, looks that high up, that far down, can turn side to side and tilt very well. Shoulder goes that high up, rotates all the way around. There is a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, a swivel and hinge at the wrist. He crunches that far forward, goes that far back. A waist swivel, legs go that far out, so great range there. They go that high up, thigh cut, double jointed knees, which have a much better range than I was expecting, especially with this fat knee pad. A cut at the top of the boot, ankle goes that high up, that far down, and 
He's got some slight ankle pivot. Here is the Ruthless Aggression JBL next to Bradshaw as an acolyte, and yeah, you can see that they use the same thin torso, so not a good choice there. Here he is next to APA version of Bradshaw, which looks kind of short, so we definitely need an updated version of APA Bradshaw and APA Farouk. Here he is next to Elite Legends Eddie Guerrero, Series 100 John Cena, and his Great American Bash opponent, Ultimate Edition Batista. I am really happy to have this JBL in my collection. As I mentioned before, I don't have a John Bradshaw Layfield from this time period, and he was one of my favorite heels during that era, so I'm really glad that I finally have one in my collection. Now, it's not without its flaws. The biggest one is the torso. In fact, I would say that's honestly the only issue with this figure. It's that the torso isn't accurate. It's way too small. It should be bigger than what it is. So hopefully down the line, Mattel can give us another JBL in his classic gear with the black trunks, the JBL logo on the back, white hat, and the entrance jacket with an accurate torso. But in the meantime, I love the head sculpt on this figure. I like the double joint elbows, the swappable hands, so it's a nice upgraded JBL to the Mattel line. So, if you are a fan of JBL, if you're a fan of this time period, I'd say you should pick it up, because aside from the torso, it's a pretty cool figure. But, hopefully you are able to find this. Walmart's distribution is horrible. I mentioned that in my other Ruthless Aggression video, so I'm not going to get too into it, but hopefully you are able to find this in stores. And then, of course, to the international collectors out there, it sucks. Hopefully you can find it at a reasonable price online. So I hate how the international collectors always get shafted. That sucks because I love you guys. You guys are awesome. So if you're an international fan, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're a fan from the U.S., also hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click on the card at the end of the video to see more wrestling figure reviews. And I'll see you next time.